In this lecture, we are going to create a detailed view layout for the avocado recipes. But before we start coding, let's participate in a short exercise. I will show you both the card layout and the detail layout design beside each other and I ask you to find those parts in both layouts which contains multiple elements yet they are identical to each other. Pause the lecture and start again when you find at least two identical sections in the app's screenshots. Are you done? Nice work! You may figure out that the recipe rating with the yellow stars and the cooking information have got identical content. Having said that, we should perhaps separate each one of them as individual layout components in a brand new view and reuse them in the card view and the detail view. With this best practice, we can avoid code duplication and we can maintain our code with ease. So let's separate the star rating from the card view. Open the avocado recipe card view file and navigate to the rating section. Then select the rating code block and cut it to the clipboard without the comment part. Next, let's create a new SwiftUI file in the view folder and name it to Recipe Rating View. After that, create a new comment section for the properties. Below the comment, create a new variable for the recipe's data. var recipe recipe our preview is broken again. I'm sure that you have got used to it already, so let's fix it. Recipe, recipes data, zero. Then add a specific size to the preview window. Preview layout, fixed, width, 320, height, 60. Resize the preview window to 100% if necessary. Then go to the text view and delete it. After that, paste the rating view from the clipboard there. We can now open the recipe card view again. Enter the following code at the rating comment. Recipe rating view Recipe recipe. Guess what? We have just inserted our rating component inside the card view. Now we are going to repeat this process with the cooking information. Select the code block of the cooking information, then cut it out to the clipboard. Yet again, create a new SwiftUI file in the view group and name it to recipe cooking view. Now create a new comment for the properties and uh, a new variable for the recipes data. Var recipe recipe. Same thing with the broken preview. Give to it the missing argument. Recipe recipe data zero. Finally, let the preview layout be fixed sized by 320 points wide and 60 points tall. Nice job! Our prep work is done, so let's jump into the actual code. Replace the text view with the cooking information by pasting this code block from the clipboard. You should see all of the information about the given recipe in the preview. Open the card view again and navigate to the cooking comment. Then insert our new component into there. Recipe cooking view. Recipe. Recipe. Congratulations! You have just created two new components and reused in the card view. Let's test our app in the live preview and watch whether our code is working or isn't, shall we? It works like a charm. We can now start coding the detail view for the avocado recipes. 
Firstly, let's create a new Swift UI file and name it to Recipe Detail View. Then create a new comment for the properties and a new variable for the recipe's data. Var Recipe Recipe After that, insert the missing argument into the preview. Recipe Recipe's data Zero. Replace the text with a new image view. Image. Recipe. Image. Resizable. Scaled to fit. Then embed it into a new vertical stack. Next, we need to make a vertical stack layout scrollable. Then add the edges ignoring safe area top modifier to the scroll view. Finally, refine it by entering. Vertical alignment shows indicators false. Now we will build out the layout of the rest of the content. Let's create a new group and enter the following comments inside it. Title Ratings Cooking Ingredients Instructions Finish this part by adding some padding to the group elements inside it in general. Padding Horizontal 24 Padding Vertical 12 Then let's start with the title. Enter Text Recipe Title Font System Large Title Design Serif Font Weight Bold Multiline Text Alignment Center Foreground Color 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 Green Adaptive Padding Top 10 Alright, I think that we forgot to add some alignments to our top V-stack, so let's fix it quickly now. Alignment Center Spacing 0 Nice. Jump back to the ratings. I bet that you will enjoy how easily we can insert the rating component inside here. Done. You see? What about the cooking information? Easy peasy. Recipe cooking view. Recipe. Recipe. I'm sure that the rest of the layout designed won't cause any problem for you. Ingredients title Text Ingredients Font weight Bold Modifier Title modifier Our custom title modifier helped us to speed up the process. For the actual ingredients, we will use a combination of two V-stack and a loop inside them. With these V-stacks, we can manage the spacing between each row and make sure that they are equal. Later on the course, we will learn how to use list views to achieve almost the same result. V-stack, alignment, leading, spacing, 5 For each Recipe Ingredients ID Self Item In V-Stack Alignment Leading Spacing 5 After stacking, insert the content inside this block Text Item Font Footnote Multiline text alignment Leading Divider
Now we are going to fetch the cooking instructions and create a nice layout for it. Let's start with the instructions title. Text Instructions Font weight Bold Modifier Title modifier It wasn't so hard, is it? Continue with the actual content. Enter for each recipe. Instructions ID self Item in VStack Alignment Center Spacing 5 Text Item Line Limit Nil Multiline Text Alignment Center Font System Body Design Serif Frame Minimum Height 100 Inside the for each loop, we use a VStack to wrap the chevron symbol following it by a text view. By the end of this course, you will learn how to imagine then code the layout without using the preview. The detailed view of the avocado recipe is almost done. Only one thing is missing, the close button. Let's test our code in the live preview. Let's create it inside a new overlay modifier. Enter the following code under the edges ignoring save area. Overlay. Inside it, enter. Button. Action comment. Label. Image, system name, chevron, down, circle, fill, font, title, foreground color, color pink. We use a nice pink color temporarily while positioning the symbol. Embed the button into a new H stack and create a new spacer above it. H stack spacer. All right, our symbol is on the right. Now push it to the top too. Embed the button into a new V stack and create a new spacer below the button. V stack spacer. Finally, now we just need some padding. Padding trailing 20. Padding. Top 24. After that, please don't forget to change the color of the bottom from pink to white. Foreground color, color white. Shadow, radius 4. I think that some fine animations could help us to make our design more interesting. Let's create a new variable and state for the button. State, private, var, pulsate, boolean, false. Then start the animation when the main view is loaded by using the onAppear modifier. onAppear, self, pulsate, toggle. Now we will define what part of the button's design we want to be gently pulsated. Add these modifiers to the button. Opacity Self Pulsate 1 0 0.6 Scale Effect Self Pulsate 1.2 0 0.8 Anchor Center Animation Animation Easing out 
duration 1.5 repeat forever auto reverses true as you can see we are animating the opacity and the scale of the button in 1.5 seconds moreover we make this animation to repeat forever back and forth obviously we need to test it in the live preview so let's do it all of the content is there and the button appears on the top right side of the device I'm sure that you can appreciate the beauty of this new declarative design using SwiftUI. In this section of the SwiftUI Mastercast course, we are really mastering the scrolling views with a combination of the horizontal and vertical stacks together. See you at the next lecture.